Defect. Defect. Blue orbs. Hmm, I could see you taking either of the middle bonuses here. Do love me uh, trade max health for a rare relic star. But I can ooh, also get behind potentially getting a one hit point elite. Especially if that one point hit point elite is the burning elite. And there's a chance here. We'd have to do two combats in a row. And then these would both have to be events. So maybe 70% chance of successfully getting this elite for free. No chance of getting any other elite for free. Feels like a rare relic start to me then. We can go left if we get a really good relic like the fossilized helix. Or the pocket watch. Otherwise we'll go this way. Early shops here if I get an old coin. It's about 30 different relics in the rare relic pool. Some of them are very good. Some of them are very... Good. There's one I named, actually, the Fossilized Helix, preventing the first time we would lose health each combat. That's sufficiently powerful that I might be able to go this way now and tackle an elite, even the Burning Elite here. Collect us some relics and some goodies. Precognition, no, bias cognition. Let's see. Still have to get through Hexagos at the end of the act. I think we can lean on this helix. Let's go with the uh, let's go with the red path. We'll see what happens. Got a dual cast first. Strike you and zap. Ten damage. Oh no. Whatever will I do? I think I'll take an early compile driver. I guess you could go first card claw. I don't know if that's good for a red path like this, though. Like the seven damage draw one. Anawab, why was the defect working out? Because they wanted to get buffer. Uh, let's do... We'll defend here. Keep the buffer. Still keep it. Gaw! Now that's just flexing. Second Compile Driver. A loop or a heat sinks. I will take a Compile Driver. Double Compile Driver gives a strong incentive to pick up any orb that isn't lightning. Once we do that, we'll have pretty tremendous card draw. It's also giving us decent damage for now, which we're going to need to get through these elites. Definitely thinking we want to go to a shop, given that I got no potions and no... Nothing really good yet. What do you have? Spoon. Could already have had double claw. The reclawination. Why not lightning? Because we already have lightning via the cracked core and our zap. Compile driver is card draw based on each different orb type. Each unique orb means the orbs must be different types. So one, f two lightning orbs, you draw one card. One frost orb and one dark orb, you draw two cards. We're going to cut a strike here. And I might buy a potion. But focus potion's not that good. I could also see taking go for the eyes here to give us some weaken. Hmm. Would it have better to been go one more combat? Potentially. Thing is with the shop is that I get guaranteed offered a couple of attacks and potions, whereas I could take two more combats and still just not get any potions. Via sheer bad luck. Sheer bad luck. 
excuse me. I am going to buy this focus potion. Maybe we end up discarding it, but I hope that we don't. Take that, you stupid louse. Okay, there's a potion. And there's a frost orb. Perfect. Tempting to take an aggregate with the card draw, but we have to get the actual functional card draw going first, or it's not going to do a dang thing. In fact, since I now have a, a good set of cards and two potions, I might just go event into elite here, rather than taking another fight. Hmm. Let's do that. Aha! Upgrade a card. Perfect. Then I've got just the card in mind. Zap. You will be upgraded first so that I can play you repeatedly with all of my superb card draw. We're going to go ahead and use our focus potion in this sentries fight. This is probably the longest fight we're going to experience for a while. Um, do I dual cast? We're going to use the buffer here. So there's no point in playing the defend. It's essentially free. But it's going to be a while till I can replace that lightning orb, so I don't think I do. Deal 20 versus 5 per turn. Uh, well, killing one up front is pretty important. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Glad I did that. Target chosen. Perfect. Fight. <clears throat> Only 10, uh, sorry, 12 damage taken, minus the focus potion that we purchased. And our rewards are another potion back, the sundial. Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. How fascinating. What an intriguing start to the run this is. And a bullseye recursion or a beam cell. Yeah, we're awfully close to... Some kind of infinite. Although we can't rely on that to get out of Act 1. We've got Hexagos to deal with. So we'll have to keep adding cards until we can defeat Hexagos. Either Beam Cell or Bullseye. Both help. I think I'll take the Beam Cell over the Bullseye. Recursion could have also been nice too. Cycle Orbs, but it's definitely way too early. We have another elite fight to get through. I guess I don't have to do this elite fight, but I, I want to. Helix will help a lot in whatever this is. It's a sleepy Lagavulin. Blessing of the Forge next turn, or I could just come Polderver. Afternoon, Spazer Laser. I don't even have to wake up right now, but I should. I don't want to draw that next turn. That'd be silly. block, so we might as well just buffer this hit. Considering upgrading everything. This is our burning elite, right? Hmm. Let's do it. Thank you. 
Might have had a kill there. Play that a little differently. Probably not where I wanted those defenses to get shuffled to, but that's fine. Get a Panagraph healing us at the start of boss combats. That's going to be a little awkward against Hexaghost, actually. A Hologram, a Beam Cell, or a Go for the Eyes. Definitely appreciate adding Go for the Eyes to this mix. Thinking Double Claw would have been pretty sweet, actually. Hologram is pretty good as well. Let's go with the Go for the Eyes. And grab a Frozen Egg, upgrading any powers we add from here. Defragment plus, anyone? I'm gonna upgrade the card draw on the cool headed. This deck's really about drawing cards right now. Is this the way that I want to go, or do we go like four card rewards looking for hexaghost answers? Or we'll be okay. Going this way. Especially if we get more fights. Fights are good. Don't care about being vulnerable if I can just buffer. <laughs> Cultist Potion, there's our Hexagos Dancer. One ritual, one strength per turn. And what's that? A defragment plus, you hear, being summoned from the distance. Beautiful. Welcome to the deck. How does he do it? Every dang run. This is no deal for us. No way to get rid of this curse before the next act. Do not take a curse into a boss fight. Good piece of general advice. It's uh, a bad time. The longer the fight is, the more times you'll draw that curse. The more you're going to feel the weight of it. Slowing you down. Defend Defend brings him to 14, right? Yeah, I can't block this no matter what. Yeah, I can't block this. Okay, no need to try then. Plus dual cast kills on this turn, so. Easy. Regal Pillow, hard to believe that I'll ever use this. Heals us more if we rest. And what's that? A defrag plus being summoned from the distance. Didn't want two of you, but I'm definitely going to take two of you. Welcome. Cool. Well, I feel pre adequately prepared for Hexaghost now. This deck is incredible at the moment. You can't keep getting away with it. So I could maybe go to the event here if I wanted to. Get a card removal potentially or another upgrade. Probably gonna upgrade Go for the Eyes next. Hmm. Or I can just look at one more card reward. Since powers are upgraded, there's always more benefit to looking at more of them. Eh, I'll take an event. Potions. Okay. Probably better if you have taken the combat. That's all right. You never know. Am I still going to employ the Cultist Potion? I don't have a better use for it, so I think I will. Angry chanting. Of course, Hexagos does on turn two attack for a number that's based on your current health. So the more health you have, the more damage Hexagos does, which certainly can make things awkward at times like these. Ouch. Thank you, Sundial. Uh, 
Uh, the exact formula is... Uh, I've got it in chat here. But hexa? Yeah, that one. Hit points divided by 12, rounded down, plus one. With six hits. Rubs are before burns. By the way, general rule rule of thumb: how what order of things happen at end of turn? Usually, if it's on top of the screen at the relic bar, happens first. Then buffs or debuffs, things that are attached to your character and displayed here, go next. Lastly, anything that's in your hands. So from literal top to bottom is the order of reservation usually. Nice little thing to remember. GG. Buffer plus or echo form plus. Echo form letting me double these defrags. Buffer letting me just buy myself some turns. Interesting. Both very good. Will a fairy save your lizard tail? Yes, fairy goes off first. Uh, using, I guess, the same logic, right? The potions are located above the relics, so potion happens first. Can I think of any cases where that doesn't follow? Ooh. Hmm. Good question. Now, I'm curious what happens uh, if you are constricted by the tentacle thing. That's a buff on your character. And you have feel no pain in play and a card that exhausts at the end of turn in your hand. Do you get the block before or after the constriction damage? That logic would apply after because the cards in your hand don't exhaust until after the constrict has already hit you. But I'm not sure it works like that in practice. That's how I would test it. Anyway. Normally this would be an easy Echo Form. I think because of the free upgrade, which helps the buffer more than Echo. Echo Form is normally an ethereal card, exhausting at the end of your turn if it's in your hand. But that's only really relevant if you're not playing it. Ooh, Black Star. Hmm. Deck does want more energy pretty badly, so I'm pretty happy with Philosopher's Stone. Do not want a Busted Crown. We want to keep taking advantage of this Frozen Egg. Chunt says, Constriction kills you in that case. I've had it happen. Well, that follows with the order of effects then from top to bottom, so I'm glad that you died, because otherwise the game wouldn't make any sense. Now, if I had an energy generating card like a turbo or a recycle, I'd be a lot more okay with a black star. As it is, I'm going to take the Philosopher's Stone. A lot of times we're not even going to care that the enemy has one extra strength because the damage will be prevented by the fossilized helix anyway. Hmm, spooky act layout though. We're not going to die to birds. We're fine against birds. Don't be ridiculous. Well, for some definitions of fine. I think I want to go this way. Here. Fighting any of these four elites. Here, 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 or here. Seems like a death sentence, potentially. 
Book of Stabbing with one more strength, three slavers with one more strength. We're really not quite able to deal with those yet. We just don't have a lot of Im immediate upfront damage we can deal. Missing something like a Doom and Gloom plus. Even a Sweeping Beam plus would be okay. Some kind of area damage. Here they are. Guess I may have to eat my words here. Are we in fact fine against the birds? That is the question. Currently looks like... Eh, we could be better. We can you. Yeah, we'll take some. Buffer only blocks for... Very small amounts, so I'm not going to bother with that. Alright, let the word eating commence. Ouch. actually buffer. That's not going to work. If I go for the eyes here, then dual cast has to kill somebody. Good enough. Okay, that was very, very painful. I will take a charge battery plus, because it's a good upfront block and it's upgraded. And we're definitely not going to fight an elite, that's why we did that. But we have fossilized Helix. Might be better than you think. Already got a buffer. Let's just go buffer defrag here. Buffer all the hits. Also got three buffers per fight, don't forget. That's gonna help a lot as well. What do sprinters eat before a race? Nothing. They want to go fasting. Take a hologram here. This is not a good fight for us. We got one angry bird, and the chosen's gonna add days to the draw pile. Problematic here. Might want to distill chaos, but I might just hit blocks. This is definitely a fight I need to respect. I've got two more coming up. All right, I'll do it. Yeah, I did just hit blocks. deal with the bird, though. Hmm. Good. Okay. That worked out. Pure luck. No skill here. Just luck. Still might die, too. 
Need one or both of them to perish here. Let's try to kill the bird. Please die. Thank you. Spooky. Did live, though. Did get our potion back. Did pick up, you guessed it, a defrag plus. Okay. I'm going to keep picking these up, but uh, we're in dire need of some more actually orb-generating cards in order for these defragments to actually do something. So until we get our hands on those, we're still going to be pretty weak. But the sheer number of free upgrades the Frozen Egg has provided is uh, pretty incredible right now. Okay, minus one buffer. I could also... Defend weak potion. This only goes to eight. Philosopher's Stone. Got it. I might need a Tempest, just as a way to deal damage. The fact that it's randomly targeted is a bit of a, bit of a problem, but... It does channel some lightning. We have good energy generation, I think we need it here. And I think we need to get to this green rest site. Last up, Snake Plant. At least I drew double defrag on turn one. Uh, I don't really want to exhaust my only lightning orb. I guess I will. Um, it's not good. I like that both of my potions are completely useless. Okay, we live. That's good. I like living. Very spooky. You know, I've been looking for a way to do area damage and a way to channel more orbs. That's kind of an amazing electrodynamics. In terms of what it gets us here. Electrodynamics means elites are not so scary anymore. Chill's not too bad either, but I'm not going to skip an Electro Plus. Holy moly. Oh, we get to... Yeah, we do get to use the Regal Pillow. Here I said it wouldn't be used, but... Here we are, about to absolutely, totally use it. And I'm going to take... Um, take Weak Potion, Liquid Memories. Eating words. They're tasty words, though. Mmm. Delicious. What upgrades are really important at this juncture? Tempest and Hologram are okay. I think fighting some elites is on the menu here. So we could go left. I also like the idea of dipping into a store. So I think my intended path is this. 
And then we can either fight a second elite if the first one went well, or just go to the shop if it didn't. Smash that rest button. Don't forget to like and subscribe and accept three apparitions, making us intangible for three turns. Hmm. Helps us get the powers set up, but I don't know. It's going to slow us down further in the draws. I don't think I like them that much. Do not want to take them. This is one of the dangers. Guess we're only doing one elite. Gotcha. Nothing to liquid memories, unfortunately. None of these cards go to the discard pile. I have to deal with random damage here. Randomly targeted damage. On our orbs. Unless we find our electrodynamics, which we don't. Oof, we're going to be made vulnerable, so we have to win next turn. Hmm. Good luck to us. Okay, well, the good news is we're not dead. Because I can definitely block all this. Or enough of it to survive at the very minimum. This is our best block line here. Let's see. Blocking for 19? Taking 24, so we take five more. I'd rather just keep the potion. Yeah, bottom Electro is pretty unfortunate here. With the right turn one draw, we could have outright uh, won this fight. But we do survive. Picking up an Aura Calcum for guaranteed block, and it is still chaos to play the top three. Also, maybe eyeing a Steam Barrier here for a bit more up front block, something the deck is a little lacking. Fighting Champ, yeah, I'll take this. Let me put that regal pillow to use again. There it is. All right, here we go. There's gas in the tank now. Mummified hand has appeared. As long as we can survive one more fight, I'm going to choose these two. This is a pretty good one. Yeah, buffer electro. Easy. Just need heat sinks. I'm hoping the shop will contain heat sinks. Quite frankly. Omits, what do you call a power that enables Huns to hit everyone in the chat? Electro Dynamics. Self repair plus, capacitor plus, yes, plus. It can self repair, honestly, considering. But the capacitor is also well worth considering. Again, still lacking the orb generation, though. Take the repair. Both pretty good. All right, well, unfortunately. There is no heat sinks here. However, there is a loop plus, and a cool headed, and a strike removal. Those are good things. Could also add a ball lightning. I don't think that one's as necessary. Third compile driver, maybe. Never did find a third orb type, so I'm not particularly sold on them, honestly. Could take a regen potion for healing. 
Although I'd have to discard one of these useful potions, so I don't really like that idea much. I'm just going to keep what we have. Head to this rest site. Chosen's back. Too afraid here with three buffers. Oops. Order. Just setting up exact lethal. Don't mind me. More powers? We'll take one. And yeah, we'll rest. Even though theoretically with the self-repair we could maybe make do without. It's been a rough act too, but I'm really, really happy about our position as we emerge from it. Nice dry nerd. Think I wasn't prepared for that? You're so stinky. Oh, uh, well, I wasn't prepared for this. I guess via Aura Calcum I am. Get him. Wants a cold snap or just another frost orb somehow. Doesn't really matter how. There it is. Ask and ye shall receive, apparently. Cool. Still more card draw, too. I, I think despite the deck reaching now almost 30 cards, we have enough card draw. Uh, and we also have enough cards that don't go back into the discard pile that we might be able to get good use out of this Sundial at some point. In hindsight, would I have taken Black Star? No. No, I think if we had taken Black Star, although we did lose a lot of our health to the birds. I'm a little concerned that if we had taken Black Star, we would have just died to the first elite rather than barely scraping past. And I'm still very happy that I have four energy, not three. It means I get to upgrade Cool Edit here, or maybe upgrade Hologram. Let's start with the Hologram upgrade. All right, El Champo. Storm seems pretty good in this deck. Threkig, thank you so much for two months of keeping it cozy. And Raphael Van Luck, thanks for four months. Craw, craw. Or craw? Sure, why not? Is that what the shrimp cultists say? Get him, Loop. So eventually we reach a point where we've played all the powers, and now what we have left is just cool headed, compile drivers, and a lot of gumption. Okay, almost below half here. Champ will drop below half on this turn, whether I like it or not. Good turn to just play the Tempest, then. We could buffer the Execute. Seems good to me. Bonk. 
Not the greatest draw in the world. Impossible! So I'd have to block 34 to even save one buffer. I might be able to do that if I can draw the go for the eyes, actually. Yeah. Easy. Against dunked upon Mr. Champ. an entropic brew hand. Wow. Some choices here. Machine learning plus. Draw one more card per turn. Creative AI plus. Create a new power every turn to play with the mummy hand. Or buffer plus. Prevent the next two instances of damage. Gotta make sure we're still good against awakened one here. I think we are. Massive turnaround from how the rest of Act 2 went. I think we're going to see a massive turnaround in general for this deck uh, for two big reasons. One, the Mummified Hand just made our energy efficiency go out the window um, and then up into the sky in a very big number. Uh, two, we're through the majority of the fights that require us to do things on turn one and turn two, like play attack cards that do a small amount of damage, and we're more getting towards the fights where playing a crap ton of powers and going to Infinity Land is the correct answer for the fight. Like Time Eater, Donu Deca, Giant Head. These are all things we're very well prepared for. And we're going to have a really good time. This is a tough choice. I actually really like the consistency of the machine learning. I think a, a third buffer... Well, a second buffer, third source of buffer, is is really nice defensively, but in the fights that we perform poorly at, it's going to weigh us down too heavily. Notably, Awakened One, Buffer Plus is terrible against, because you're getting a one-time effect versus giving the bird a permanent per-turn effect. Creative AI, can't, Creative AI can let you outscale the Awakened One, but only if you're ahead of the block game in the first place. If you're struggling to block the Awakened One's attacks and you play Creative AI, it's only going to make your problem worse. But I think we have the, the base coverage that we really need for that. So this is pretty acceptable. Really eyeing machine learning a lot, though. I'm going to take the machine learning here. And I think I'll go Entropic Brew over the Distilled Chaos. And I'm pretty okay with a Fusion Hammer, but I'm also really, really okay with a Slaver's Collar. Just gain one more energy per turn in boss and elite fights. We don't really need more energy, thanks to Mummy Hand. The other two come with downsides that I don't want to be settled with. Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. Let's just give ourselves a penalty only some of the time. Or give herself a bonus, rather, only some of the time. The penalty being that we don't have the bonus. So, we should strive to go to multiple shops. There's one good way to do that. Probably going to upgrade Cool Headed's with Prejudice here. Take two Elites. And one Early Event. Sounds good to me. And we remove a Strike here. Remove the other strike at the other shop. That way we get all of the strikes removed before the end game. We also get to look at guaranteed upgraded powers in the power slot of each of those shops. Don't have to worry about the burning elite. We already got that out of the way in Act 1 or whatever. Whatever we did that. Who's our boss? We see the bird? We did. So, Awoken 1 will be up first. And we'll want to take cards that really, really, really help with that fight. Like force field. I 
only one buffer. So I have to block for 32 to take nothing, huh? I just don't need to, right? We have self-repair. Only really need to block for 16. That's easy. Oh, and I can actually can block for 32. Even better. To the power of Mummy Hand, we just get to play every card in our hands. Seems good. Leap Plus is another example of a card that's very good against the Awakened One, as is this Go for the Eyes. Already got one upgraded Go for the Eyes. Let's grab just the standard block card. Leap Plus. It seems boring, but I assure you it's going to help here. Double Orb Walkers, pretty challenging encounter here. Get a Rare Relic for beating them. I'm happy to use all of my potions if necessary, and it looks like it sure might be based on this opening hand. Yikes. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it's necessary. Ugh. Okay, gamble. Greetings, Electrodynamics. Good to see ya. Please delete my opponents. Get a shovel, allowing us to dig for relics at rest sites, along with a lot of money. And another defrag plus or a cold snap plus. I think I'll take one more defrag, honestly. Four copies of defragment plus. Yeah. Extreme bait. Probably, actually, until we get a cool headed. Or uh, not a cool headed, a heat sinks. I think you might be right. Hard to resist with the mummified hand, though, that's for sure. And we have pretty good frost generation at this point, too. Maybe not good enough, though. We want to skim. I think white noise is a bit of a trap. Card draw would be good. Here we go. Heat sinks. That's what we're looking for. Heat sinks is when it gets magical, as you can see. Glacier would be a good pick. Chill would be a good take. I would take more cool headeds as well, I think. Especially if they're upgraded. Less so unupgraded. But upgraded cool headeds, definitely. A few more orb slots for maximum effect here. Okay, now I'll take a second go for the eyes. Go for the eyes is Awakened One Insurance. The Awakened One attacks every single turn, which means go for the eyes always applies weaken to the Awakened One. 
rather important here. Definitely having turn one problems sometimes. Makes sense with how many powers, right? Thankfully, the Helix is here to partially provide, in such instances, a bit of relief. Headed, that is upgraded. I'll take it. Yes, that is definitely one of the downsides with an upgraded machine learning is that your turn one becomes a little bit inconsistent at times. That is definitely true. Reinforced body on sale here, begging me to take it. Seven block X times, pretty sweet actually. Amplify is also rather intriguing. Don't know that I want Amplify. I do want Reinforced. Chat asks, what are the chances a card is upgraded in card rewards? Starts at 0% and then increases as you move through the acts. So when you reach Act 2, it becomes 25% per card. And when you reach Act 3, it's 50% per card. Only non-rare cards can be randomly upgraded. Above Ascension 12. Ascension 12 says upgraded cards appear less often. Those numbers are halved. So here on A20, we play with... 12.5% per card in Act 2, 25% in Act 3. We'll take the puzzle, but I think with the buffers it often ends up uh, unused. And I'll fight this elite. Sue me. Well, this is not even a fire potion. Okay, um, this could get bad. Hmm, not good. Perhaps I should have gone to the rest site after all, huh? So, nothing useful in the draw pile or the discard pile. No way to kill any of them? Awkward as heck. I could try dual casting, but it's exceedingly unreliable. This is then the time for the Blessing of the Forge. Yes, definitely. Play you as well. Ah, okay, not too bad. I would say that that helps. And then I guess I just reinforce. Tank the rest of the face, and we should be fine from there. We'll have eight cards in hand. And there's going to be one less dagger on the field. Yeah, we're fine. Minus a few hit points, but we're fine. Perfection. I'm actually pretty happy fighting a second elite now, knowing that this can't happen again, and we're just going to go back to health, full health with the self-repair. Actually seems pretty good. I 
And then once all the powers have been played, it feels remarkably similar to the last Silent Run, where we can't draw anything but amazing cards constantly. And block for 100 every turn. Now I have a boat thingy. A core surge or a hologram plus. I think in another hologram really rounds out the defensive strategy, particularly for the Awakened one. That's just my opinion, though. Can self repair be created by white noise or creative AI? No. Random sources of card generation will never create anything that can permanently heal you or benefit you. So that's also true of Dead Branch. Dead Branch can't make feed or alchemize either, I believe. Only notable exception to this is Hand of Greed, a, a card that can gain you gold that is possible to be generated randomly. Which is mostly an oversight. The other option is to have the bird-faced urn relic. That way you heal from any power. Uh, and those can be randomly generated. Could take one more battery plus here. That feels a bit redundant. I think we're okay. It's close to good, but not quite. But look at that. We're basically back to full. Easy. Courier would be nice, but I must take the blue key. We can do event or combat. Still haven't seen Mind Bloom. Let's take one on event here. Warped Tongs. Upgrade a card in our hand every turn, or we just take one targeted upgrade. Have to fight an elite with the Pain Curse. That's not so bad, given that it's not a Reptomancer. And I could remove the pain here. Hmm. That would let me focus on digging for relics. Let's do it. The start of your turn, upgrade a random card in your hand for the rest of combat. Let's dig. Yes, pain and buffer is pretty bad together. That is true. I don't have to play cards, though. Despite the fact this is a card game. So for example, here, I don't have to play this. I don't have to play any of these cards, although we'll lose all three of our buffer charges if I do. I think it's worth it here to play a few. Sorry, buffer. Nice knowing you and all that. But uh, I've got more important things to do at the moment. Ironically enough, we get a Preserved Insect from the last Elite. Although that will work against uh, Spire Spear and Spire Shield. I'll happily take a Chill here for a bit more Frost. We could try Blizzard out as a way to do renewable damage in longer fights. I don't think we need that, do we? Sure hope we don't. Ah, 
Toxic Eggs a little bit late. Panacea is here. Waffle is here. Static Discharge Plus. Now, there's a thing I could use. First and foremost, let's lose the pain. What triggers first? Tongues or Creative AI? The Creative AI does. So Tongues and Creative AI work together in the way that you would want them to. Hmm. Awaken one's pretty sh upcoming here. Discharge is not that helpful there. I could see a cold snap. Just one more frost being okay. I'm a little worried we have too much frost at that point. How do we do damage? Hmm, that would be a case where, yeah, where things trigger out of order. That's true. Tongues are a notable exception. Don't think we consider Panacea for heart, because the odds we draw it on turn one are so slim. And you have to draw it on turn one to block the debuff. I think I do just keep most of the money, unless I'm buying this cold snap. But again, I'm worried about lightning. I really should have taken one of those ball lightnings earlier. But I saw... I'm just going to go with nothing here. A little worried. Let's buffer this. Blizzard would have also been a reasonable add. Added chill instead of blizzard though, right? Yeah, I did. Doesn't seem too bad though. Just makes the Kapaldivers potentially draw more. Really good damage card. A lot of focus with loop. Recursion's the other reasonable option here. I think I'll go with Darkness. Last minute Darkness Edition. Seems pretty cool, actually. And we have to recall here at the final fire. All right, our first and major difficult challenge here, the Awakened One. We talked about how threatening this boss is for a deck with so many powers. How many do we actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine powers. So 18 strength to the Awakened One if we play them all, which I'm not going to do. I'm only going to play some of them. Electro might have to be one of them, though, just to get rid of these birds. Yeah, I really don't have a way to kill them other than this, so yes. Play that as well. So we'll lose our buffer here on turn one. Not much I could do about that. Get attack for 15 by 4 on turn 2. That's actually pretty good, considering that I drew Chill Plus here. Gonna vote for 10. Okay. Three free Frost Orbs, please. What do you got? Second Machine Learning. I'll play your games. 
here we go. So, here's one of the big reasons I was talking about go for the eyes. 17 by 4? How about 12 by 4? Seems a bit more manageable. Not going to play the self-repair yet. Not going to play the buffer yet. But we want to play all the defragments and the loop. Eighteen by four, including the weaken. Terrifying. So we have to block for 72 on these multi-hit turns. The good news is I already have 50 base blocks, so all I have to do is block 12, uh, 22 with the stuff in my hand. Not too bad. Remember, we are drawing seven cards per turn. What would that be without the Awakened? Um, Awakened One's base attack is 6 by 4. With 19 strength, that would be 25 by 4. A clean 100. Just 100. Now you're the awakened one. Seven turns of weaken. Once it dies, we can play the remaining powers. It's hollow darkness plus here. One by three is a pretty big number. Oh, I did actually kind of fail to block that. But that's what the buffer's for. So yeah, who all expected a flawless Awaken 1 fight? Zero damage taken. Even I didn't think we were going to do that. GG. Prepared pretty well. No time eater. Instead, it's Donu Deka for us. A time eater would definitely lose. We just uh, we do what we did in the last fight. We set up 50 block per turn with a dark orb and then pop the time eater with it. But there's no time eater. There is these two. I guess I'll bother. Usually see me going for Donu first. I like to stop their strength scaling. With the two of these. Not always possible.
Not a bad turn. Might take some damage next turn, since all my block is now gone. But the Electro is going to let us kill these two quickly, at least. Not quite enough, huh? Barely lose that buffer charge. Double machine learning means we'll be fine, though. Yes, Art of War is already gone. That's pretty tempting, Tempest. Let's do it. Although next turn, yeah, let's do it. Another perfect boss fight. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing thread. Could be all throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this card draw? And card draw is absolutely what's carrying this defect deck right now. The fact that even though it's a 36 card deck, it only takes about four turns to draw everything. Thanks to the machine learning and all the cool headeds. And it'd be tempting to upgrade another cool headed, but I'll continue to allow the warped tongs to put in work. Let's see what this relic says. Ornamental fan. Play three attacks in one turn, get four more block. Not a huge deal, but it'll definitely do. Likewise, feel the same way about loop. Not a huge deal, but it'll definitely do. Two loops is like having four more orb slots, which absolutely, positively gets us going here. Can afford Glacier alongside. Take some manipulation for the damage to work out. That's okay. Hard to go wrong with more powers at this point. Toolbox or card removal. I'm gonna go with the strike remove. But toolbox is pretty tempting there. Beautiful turn one. Have no complaints. Do I bother? Yeah, I'll do it. Next turn could hurt quite a bit, although we have three buffers, so how much could it really hurt, you know? Happy to see Electro Plus in my hand. Here we go charge battery, then defrag. Maximize the chance we get a free electrodynamics here. Glacier free, unfortunately. So we block 35. Take four. Thirty-one. So I'll take eleven here. That's actually fine, right? I I block this. Buffer one, two, three stabs, get stabbed on the fourth one, draw three more cards, and then we heal ten at the end of combat and 25 at the start of the next boss fight. There's no reason to use anything resource-wise here. 
It's actually good that we get the card draw. Defragment, hello. Oh, here's one. That's right. Can't turn around. Problematically. Still within healing range, though. like a real capacitor. I think I'll take one more white noise. Just one more random power to help out against heart. Fusion's also a fun little option. But I don't think it's one that helps much. Anchor helps us preserve our buffer turn one. That seems like a good idea. Keep the weak potion as a just-in-case. Don't think the essence of steel is going to work. That I removed Creative AI, never took it in the first place. Didn't feel like we needed it. Gonna find out if that was true or not. All right, we'll set up with Frost here. Let's get rid of this Electro early, I suppose. Big hit first. Yes. Okay, life is easy. Biased. I'll be back for you later. This is definitely too early to play a bias cog. You're already weakened. Okay. I would like to draw some more cards. Thank you. Definitely don't want to play that. Do take a bit of a beating here. Could Liquid Memories the Glacier to save some health? Doesn't feel like that's necessary yet. Probably gonna need the Liquid Memories for a good damage later on. And maybe to save our bacon in a real pickle. Mmm, pickles. Still waiting on some powers to get in play. Might have to use the Weak Potion actually now in order to guarantee that we have Weak for the next two turns, right? I'm not drawing any weaking, Weakening, and Artifact is about to be applied. So let's use that now, or I deeply regret it. This is currently giving me more energy, so let's not play that. Perfect. Second machine learning. I've been really, really happy every time we've gotten two of these. I think this fight is going to be another such instance. Where I'm just very happy overall for the assistance I've just received. Finally, all the powers are in play. Frost. 
cross for next turn, especially. Here's a good time to hologram our Tempest. Get some damage in here. Can't just not hit the heart. We have to put an end to the fight. Spooky. I think it's time to use the biased. We have to uh, kick it into overdrive for these last few turns. Really not happy that we drew go for the eyes like this, though. Oh well, not much I can do about it. Here's where I could liquid memories on the darkness. I think I might need to liquid memories on the glacier, though. Go for the eyes, hit the forehead. Okay, very happy to see that up first. Let's just start capping damage here. What do you think? Damage still looking low? Ooh, I should have set up better on this turn, though. It's okay. really like to bring this thing below 200 on this turn if I could. It's going to go to 9 by 15 next. We have one last multi-attack that seems reasonable, and then it gets unreasonable. I need the compile plus, actually. Memories the darkness. Seems like a reasonable play. I do that. Yeah, nine by fifteen. Who gives a crap? GG. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.